Jacob and Michael. All right, so <laughs> this is Back in Tunes, obviously. From when you clicked on it, you'd see it said Back in Tunes. If you're confused, I'm sorry, uh, go see your uh, guide over there, and they'll direct you in the right direction for the podcast you want. So I guess we can't move that fast. What are we even talking about? Why are we here? Uh, that's Jake up on the other side. I'm Michael. We're going to be talking about Will Vinton. Um, he passed away a couple weeks ago. I, I wanted to get to the episode, but we had a Halloween episode scheduled, so we had to get that done first and then do this one. Uh, Will Vinton is kind of personal for me because most of animation takes place in Los Angeles. Will Vinton was a self-made man who created a studio here where I live, in Oregon, and specifically Portland, but he's also from McMinnville, which isn't too far away from here, and uh, I I think I remember sharing photos with you about the museum display, the gallery display is what I should say, not museum, um, at the uh, art gallery in McMinnville. Hmm, I, oh god, it's been a while, but I think I might have seen stuff like that. I remember seeing a few uh, clay figures from, like, his most important works, Yeah, including, uh, if I remember correctly, the life of Mark Twain. Yeah, I know, the funny thing is we are not going to discuss this one because I haven't seen that yet. I was going to save it. Me and uh, Andrew have been talking about doing it for what did we just watch? A podcast he does about the strangest movies that have ever been made, and I've been told that the Adventures of Mark Twain is really bizarre. So I'm not going to discuss that one. I'm going to kind of skip over that. But um, did I send you a comic book that he did after he stopped doing animation? I feel like he did one. I can't remember what the hell it's called, like Knee High, Private Eye, or something like that. Like he's a spy, but he's a thumb thumb high. He's a really tiny spy. I can't remember what the hell it's called. <laughs> uh, knee High, Private Eye, I think it was a show on Comedy yeah, Central. Yeah, no, it, 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 I think that's an old Hanna-Barbera cartoon. What am I talking about? Um, okay, so uh, Will Vinton basically started doing short films. Uh, and sent him out to film festivals, and he got some notice by people in the industry. And that's when he started doing music videos for John Fogarty, uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Um, and then he got hired to do, uh, not technically like animated films, but like animated intros. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Brain Donors, which is a love letter to the Marx Brothers. Have you ever seen that one with John Turturro? No, I haven't actually. But as far as uh, animated openings... That I mean, did he do the one for uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse? No, I'm pretty sure. I think it was like Cloaky or something like that. I could be wrong. Um, it doesn't say that in his credits here. Uh, but you know, you you seen Return to Oz, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Oh gosh, yeah, that um, that Troll King. Right, he does the animation for that, and that was kind of like his big breakthrough. People started knowing who he was around '85, and um, then he did uh, what was the one? He did the Michael Jackson ones. Um, Oh, yeah, Moonwalker. Oh, Moonwalker God, yeah. Moonwalker and Captain EO, um, which I've never seen either one. And I've been, I think when we launch our new show next year where we just talk about all retro stuff, not specific genres or certain mediums, we should discuss all of the Michael Jackson short films Thriller, Captain EO, Moonwalker, Ghosts. I feel like there's a couple others in there. Yes. Oh, definitely. Oh, gosh. Um, regarding Moonwalker. Michael Jackson was like uh, he was working on Bad. He was f finishing up that album. Uh, he worked with Will Vinton on the um, legit, don't just uh, the Leave Me Alone music video. Oh, you know, okay, basically okay. talking about the pop rock, you know, telling the pop rock to get off his back, you know, with the uh, dancing, uh, with that dancing elephant man skeleton. <laughs> I barely remember this video. I remember that video didn't do that well compared to his other stuff. I think it was part of like a greatest hits collection or something, right? Or a remix. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. It was definitely one of the his most memorable songs from Bad. But uh, from then on, that's when Michael recruited him for Moonwalker, and there was that whole uh, that whole sequence where Michael Jackson's just running away from his crazy fans, and all those people are like claymated and just looking so bizarre, all just to get his autograph. And then, of course, he hides in this bunny suit, which uh, ends up becoming a claymation uh, process. And then he starts dancing with the uh, bunny suit uh, near the end of that segment. Okay, that's it, weird. I will say, I know, it's, it is. It's a weird movie. It's what, like, what oh, is what's Moonwalker this about? I don't, about? I don't understand. Is, I, I, I only remember Moonwalker <laughs> as a video game for the Genesis. Oh, yeah, it is. And uh, there was a video game based on that movie. Uh, it was just so random. There was It was just, like, all over the place. It might as well, might as well have been something like, uh, you know, Amelia Tip. Oh, oh, gosh, what's that one John May movie? Uh 
Tales of the West. What movie? Who? I don't know. It was like four different. Se- it was like four different segments. Oh, okay. Into like so you're saying like an anthology movie. film with one connecting device? And yeah. That's Michael Jackson. But I, all I remember is there's like a giant robot sequence and he's fighting Joe Pesci. I think. Exactly. That's what it was too. And Joe Pesci owed him a favor. Well, he owed uh, somebody a favor, like one of the producers uh, working on that movie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, uh, but still, like I said, the whole movie was just like, uh, what the hell is this about? It was just bouncing around from place to place. And I guess the main segment was the Smooth Criminal segment, okay, which was pretty awesome. But the whole – again, all the claymation stuff was all uh, Vinton's work. Uh, Heck, I even rewatched Speed Demon today, Uh, you know, again, just to look at like, you know, how – you know, well, the uh, little claymation bunny uh, captured all of Michael Jackson's moves perfectly. Like, they got the animation down perfectly. You know, it's funny well, is you say claymation, and that's a very common word to say now, but he created claymation. Before that, it was either stop motion animation or that weird doughy, f- uh, what would you call what Gumby was made out of? I don't even know what that was. Just clay? I mean, just, but not, it wasn't called claymation, but it was. I don't know, it just seemed different because the way that he does his animated movies and, and television shows, it's like a weird foam almost. The texture to it is completely different. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. It was just some kind of weird – uh, throughout uh, the years, Will Vinton did start working with a few different materials. Uh, and by the time like computers were coming around, he uh, wanted to up it. <clears throat> it definitely helped the uh, animation process easier, you know, like constantly moving the clay, moving uh, – you know, changing the shapes, this and that. Yeah, well, cha- speeding up the process, because stop-motion animation is clearly one of the most time-consuming uh, forms of animation. Oh, I mean, God, I, I yes. imagine, like, computer now, I feel like what they, they didn't do the in-betweens, what I've heard, is uh, back in the day, they had to do, like, Chuck Jones would do the extremes. And then he would have his animated staff do the movements in between the extremes, which were called in-betweens. And... Um, but then now the computer does it. They have the, the extremes, and the computer knows how to fill in that space, and it saves time. It's really weird. Definitely. I mean, uh, you look at Nightmare Before Christmas, and that took years to finish. Yeah, totally. But now you could probably do oh. that with a computer in a year and a half. I know. You just, like, you know, make the model out of clay and then just, you know, scan it, you know, then animate, then animate it itself. What was oh, the, what was the one that flushed away was supposed to be stop motion animation, but they used it, a computer program to make it look like it was. Same thing like with South Park, where it started off with little paper oh, cutouts, yeah. but now they use a computer technology to make it look like the paper cutouts. It's it's an odd imitation. Indeed, uh, and the way it just you know flows so smoothly, it's like wait a minute, this can't be traditional like you know claymation or any of that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, Will Vinton again. He was behind so many ideas. Like, heck, his studio, and I think someone under him, created the Arnold uh, Does This. Or, uh, I forget what the short stories were called exactly. Oh, oh you mean how it became about... Hey Arnold? Exactly. I was like, holy crap, one of my favorite cartoons growing up in the 90s, you know. Something I wanted to stay in Saturday night for. It's like, oh, hey, our Arnold's going to come on. All right, cool, let's stop playing outside. Let's go back in the house now. The uh, so he did that, and there's another one that he did the pilot for. It did get picked up as a series, but it's completely different. I sent you the the footage of it. It's called Slacker Cats. The texture, yes. and the oh, beauty. Gosh. That was the most layered of all of his works, and it didn't get picked up by Fox, and it got picked up. I want to say by the Family Channel or whatever the hell it was called at the time. What is the Family Channel? It went from ABC Family to Freeform, mm-hmm. right? I think. Yeah, before that it was like know. Fox Family and um, so here so Slacker Cats, I actually watched it when it first started airing. This is one of those first shows they started showing on YouTube first to build an audience, and it lasted I think two seasons. But when it did get picked up by ABC Family, it was no longer claymation. It was really shitty flat um, flash animation. Real stiff mm. movements. The cast is completely different. The storyline is kind of different, but he still gets credit because he did the original pilot. So um, I, I say you can find it on um, on uh, YouTube. Check it out because it's way better than the final product. Okay, yeah, definitely do. Uh, I mean, honestly, uh, when it came, uh, one of his works um, that I was like most familiar with, especially growing up as a kid, and, and I loved Eddie Murphy, was the PJs. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh my god. <laughs> PJ's was frustrating for me though because that was one of those shows that seemed to constantly be preempted because 
Fox had a bad habit for a long time of debuting a show, but guess what? They also have sports going at the same time, so every once in a while it'll air, Futurama being the biggest curse of all. I could go two months without seeing an episode of Futurama because baseball went over, football went over, just and then that's what happened to the PJs. And um, then they moved it over to the UPN, I think, for a year or two. And by then, Eddie Murphy wasn't even around. They replaced him with like, another cast member because I guess he just lost interest and, and would rarely show up for recordings. Man, I know. Oh, gosh. That does suck. I mean, to know that in particular because I loved uh, Eddie Murphy's voices. Pretty pretty, pretty much he was uh, – um, oh, Cletus Clump from <laughs> the Nutty Professor yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still find myself to this day. The show was twenty years ago almost, and I find myself going, "Holy Moesha!" <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, especially when his uh, old neighbor uh, gets robbed, and all of a sudden he walks in, and, like <laughs> she's 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 bare naked. He's like, "Oh, good God!" <laughs> I um I just love the look. Now I'm looking this up here. He actually did change it. It's not clay. In the '90s, he created foam rubber, which is called foamation. And um, the chemicals would not separate and deteriorate, and the, and the characters would fall apart. It saved a lot of time by creating that method. So there's another thing that he created. And I'm looking here. There's another thing for – okay, we're going to talk about this here in a bit. My favorite – I would say definite top five um, animated series is Gary and Mike. And he created a new digital video capture system, which also sped things up. They could move the camera around while – they were recording, and they didn't have to worry about, oh, did the character move out of place? Did they have to fix this? Um, now, I sent you some of Gary and Mike. I'm sure you didn't get to watch all of them, but I've been through the whole series many times. What did you think of it? Yeah. I did watch the first episode, and I'm like thinking it's definitely a little bit more cracked out version of The Odd Couple. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, his dad, what he'll do to him if that car does go missing? Yeah. I'm like, Jesus. Uh, did you recognize and that he's... voice, by the way, his dad? Oh gosh, was that um? Oh my God, why am I forgetting? Uh, Red and uh, RoboCop. Uh, ah! Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, hold on. What is fuck is his name? I was thinking more of Brian Cranston plays. Okay, so Gary and Mike. Mike is the tightly wound up version of everybody you've ever known, like me. Um, he, he he's super nervous all the time and stressed out because his dad's a psychopath, played by Brian Cranston, who's an ex-military tough guy, and he demands that once his son graduates from college, that he's going to hit the road. It's it's a journey of being a man. He's going to drive from the West Coast to the East Coast and then back uh, on the Lewis and Clark right. Trail because I get, I, I, that he was an ancestor of Lewis and Clark. And um, he's supposed to go by himself, but he ends up taking his friend Gary. No, hold on. I got it backwards. Mike is the, Mike is the crazy one. Gary is the stressed out one. Um, and immediately... I mean, within just, like, mere moments of them hitting the road together, their car gets stolen. I think they end up, like, eating a rabbit who's someone's pet, uh, getting accosted by rednecks. And they, and they think they're, like, from Deliverance. He's like, "Go, oh, damn it, I'm sick and tired of everybody thinking that when we pull them over, we're going to do butt stuff with them. I hate that movie. We don't really like banjos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I know. That was, like, your stereotypical red. <laughs> yeah, and then the series just gets crazier oh, and crazier. God. There's there's episodes where they go to New York, um, and no no Chicago, and then they get on the Jerry Springer show, and he has to confront his dad live on television. And uh, I just remember one of my favorite jokes is they're in this really really shitty hotel, and um, Gary decides he has to use the bathroom, but he's absolutely terrified, and he's in this nasty nasty ass stall, and he holds himself up. All by the walls, like he's holding himself by the walls of the stall, not bare. Now he just—he's gonna drop the poop. <laughs> he's gonna drop the poop down, <laughs> and then all of a sudden he looks over and someone's staring at him through a um, fuck, what are they call it? You know the little holes where you're supposed to take your dick through. Um, uh, oh, glory hole. Glory hole. There's a guy staring at him through the glory hole. He goes, "What you doing?" pooping and gary freaks out falls straight to the toilet which is the most nasty thing you've ever seen in your life and then he goes <laughs> he goes back he cleans himself off he goes back to the bedroom goes to lay down and the guy looks at another people he goes what you doing sleeping jeez <laughs> oh, oh god that was crazy. <laughs> but yeah oh man no um oh gosh kurtwood smith that's thank who you, it was that's you, a great you. officer dick do you fly bobby <laughs> 
Yeah. Can you fly, Bobby? <laughs> they, they no, and then to, Harlan they Williams was the voice of Mike. Yeah, Harlan Williams is so good at this. I mean, they end up at like at a dead festival where uh, Gary drops acid, and while he's out, he thinks he marries some hippie girl and he inherits a whole family. Um, there's another one where they they go to they go to Florida because their best friends are in a band called Raise a Cat, which is this really <laughs> shitty heavy metal band, and they sing like uh, like poison version of like classic love songs or something that's really uh, um, they do they do walk like an Egyptian. It's really funny, but you know they end up getting caught up in this whole witness protection thing and ruining it. Everything they touch inadvertently or um, on purpose is poison they're just disaster prone they're the funniest duo and this show i think it lasted like seven episodes on upn i taped every episode i could i was obsessed with it. and this is back when upn well hold on uh there's different uh areas of this country where we got upn as a whole network did you get that as a whole network or was it syndicated oh i think it was a whole network okay See, I lived in Indiana, and we ran out of stations because uh, Fox and uh, the WB took them up. So UPN would rerun all their stuff on Fox late Saturday and Sunday. So right before Saturday Night Live would start, I would watch Gary and Mike. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I never ever watched this as a kid, but God, I wish I did. Yeah, they, they, I remember they packaged it up. When Adult Swim took off, Comedy Central decided to compete. They bought the rights to Futurama. Um, uh, not three south. That other one, undergrads, and Gary and Mike can air them Sundays at eleven, and I, that's when I finally caught every episode. My favorite one is uh, they go to like Mall of America, and bare naked ladies make an appearance. Um, oh, awesome! And they're, they're really good in that too. And it almost feels like it's inspiring. Remember that music video, Pinch Me, where they're working in a hot dog stand. Oh yeah, Pinch Me. Oh yeah, when they're in the fast food place and everything's like going backwards. Yeah. Well. That whole episode of Gary and Mike is set in a hot dog joint where in order to compete against the other hot dog place in the mall, which is the evil hot dog place, they enter this huge con- <laughs> they enter this huge contest, which is like this evil Knievel thing where they're jumping over vats of grease, they're, they're flying around with their little hot dog sticks, whatever, and they're throwing hot dogs in the air and he's got to catch them in certain ways, whatever, and compete with somebody else. And the, the other place just has strippers, <laughs> just has strippers who lick hot dogs. And it's just, oh my God, I can't. Every time, every episode is so amazing. There's one where they go to Hollywood and um, they meet, um, they're, they're trying to find the scene, the hot scene in Hollywood. And they're nobody. So this is going to be really, really hard. And they run into this uh, Veronica Baxter. And she's like the star of uh, Make, Home, uh, Make Room for Mommy kind of uh, uh, 70s sitcom. But now she's like wigged out on drugs and she's horny as hell and, and she looks like a dried out she looks like a dried out wallet. She's she's had way too many too much alcohol and too many tanning sessions. And she's desperate, desperate to trap Gary and Mike in there forever. And when you walk through the doorways, there's a laugh track. And she makes them reenact like all the scenes from the TV show, but at the same time she's also trying to fuck them. And then she dies. <laughs> She dies. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? And they got to get rid of her body. <laughs> and they try to get help from their best friend from high school. Or Gary, uh, Mike's best friend from high school. So, you know, he's a little sketchy. And he's completely wigged out on meth. And he gets them caught up in drug dealers and a fake Gwyneth Paltrow who happens to be a man who Mike sleeps with. And, you know, they end up taking the body to a morgue. And it turns out at, in, in the back of the morgue is actually where the big Hollywood scene is, where all the famous people are. <laughs> Was that actually Gwyneth Paltrow who voiced the fake Gwyneth Paltrow? No, no. But here's the thing is they have the body with them the entire time. And, and, and they take her to the morgue. <laughs> And all these famous celebrities and agents see her there. And they're like, Veronica Baxter, I haven't seen her in a while. And they both look at each other and they start calling up their agent. Like, book me Veronica Baxter right now. She's dead. She's hotter than she's ever been in 30 years, but she's dead. (laughs) 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 Fuck, I love this show. And nobody ever remembers it. It's so, all the episodes are on YouTube. You know, no one's going to put them on a DVD. I'll tell you this. I was so desperate for new episodes that I didn't already have off television. I bought an Emmy tape. Um, with four episodes on it off of eBay for like thirty dollars back in two thousand four. Good lord. Yeah, and the tape was fucked up, and I didn't care. It was like rolling and stuff like that. But um, yeah, PJ's is the one that's remembered, but Gary Mike's the one that just absolutely kills me. I love it so much. 
Oh, God, yeah, especially knowing that I have to watch more episodes. Yeah, Jesus. It, it just gets crazier and crazier. Every episode is just complete madness. Um, where we, Oh, yeah, so before he did all this, he was doing tons of commercials. So he did this stuff for the music videos. He had done the stuff for Return to Oz. He had done uh, a couple claymation episodes for, like, Christmas specials on CBS. But what made him a phenomenon were commercials. And nobody seems to remember the Noid. He was, like, synonymous in the late 80s, early 90s. You know, Domino's oh God, little... No, I... What's that? Yeah, no, I remember... I think you sent me a clip of that. I think I remember seeing that briefly once, uh, uh, that little Noid. Yeah, you were really and young, I ended up watching... This, yeah, when this hit big, you might have been three or four at most. There was even a video yeah. game of it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dang, no, that's something I'd have to watch. Do you, um, do you remember the spot, the 7-Up spot, when he was, like, um... A stop motion character. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. He was. Oh my. He was a mascot for yeah, Seven Up. Yeah. He, had a, like he had a video game for the Genesis, and that game is friggin' awesome. The Noid game sucks. I remember it sucking ass. Oh. You had to buy. I think. Well, you had I, to, to, you, I think you could buy in stores. I think you had to buy like eighty pizzas in order to get one. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I'm not just telling but I need this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a collector's item. But yeah, no, I would not order Domino's, sadly, no. no the, the Domino's we have here, for some reason, is way better than all the other ones I've ever had. They have a Brooklyn-style pizza, which, uh, big foldable slices. Mm -mm -mm. Like thin, big old slices. Oh, yeah. Delicious. I mean, it's nowhere nearly as good as even Sparrow, which I know is kind of mediocre pizza, but it's still, you know, my jam when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, man, for me, it was like uh, Mountain Mike's or Round Table. I've never had Mountain Mike's. I hate Round Table. I don't know. I understand the phenomenon of that one. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, to each their own. Some, when I say pizza sweets, oh, no, 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 it's the no. greatest pizza in the world. People are like, oh. what? Yeah, no, that was more like of a, like a, a what? <laughs> kind of like, uh, um, uh, California yeah. Raisins was another big breakthrough for him. And yes. I remember those commercials, and they were really cool. I even had a little, like, three-inch figure. like the, Maybe not three-inch, but it was the size of one of those little Smurf dolls of a couple of the raisins. I think my mom had a couple of those things, too, actually. I think I remember her getting us a couple of these. Like, they were that memorable. Yeah, and then, the, what is it, the Temptations was the... Was it the Temptations or was it the Four Tops? Whatever, they became really popular again and started going on tour because of these cartoons. Oh, my God, yeah. I think they did. Did they ever do one of the Beach Boys? They might have. I don't know if it stopped at uh, R&B, 60s R&B. I can look that up sometime. Um, mm, okay. here's the one that I don't remember is the claymated M&M's, uh, cartoons. I, I only know the CGI ones that we've known for what, the last, what, 15 years that are so popular. Yeah. Oh God. Ever since I was a kid. I know. Yeah. No. Will Vinton was the inspiration behind all that. I was like, Oh damn. I was thinking it's like really every time you go that. to see a movie, they have that thing where they're attached, they're stuck to a, like, um, a rocket ship and one of them's trying to undo the bomb and he's like, Hey buddy, turn off your phone. We're trying to watch the movie here. This is why people don't go to movies, and then he just leaves them there. <laughs> is the <laughs> clock supposed to be ticking? Yes, you're all going to die. And, of course, we've got that amazing Billy West who voices over the red Eminem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here's a, there is a project that Will Vint was never able to do, and I only know about this because it's at his gallery. Is uh, God, I, I'm still angry with myself now that I never went to go see any of his panels. Once or twice a year, he would host a panel in... Uh, in Portland, and for some reason, I just like, oh, I'll find the time eventually. Now he's dead, and I never get to go, and I'm pissed. But um, he created uh, Princess and the Frog, like a demo reel for a, a, a claymation version of Princess and the Frog. And oh, he, wow. But yeah, but even a couple years ago, he was still holding out on making it, and I was like, dude, they, they made a Disney one. They're not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. Mm. Sadly, no, they wouldn't. That would be something to see, and I'm sure Vin would get the uh, get it right down to the core and you know portray it perfectly. Yeah, I don't and know. And I still I'm haven't still seen gonna... the Disney one though. I'm looking. Oh, you haven't? It's, it's it's okay. It was a nice love letter to hand drawn animation because they hadn't done any in a while. Um, and here it is. It's it was, that comic book that he did for Dark Horse Comics that I sent you is called Jack Hightower. I'm pretty Jack sure. Jack Hightower. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll have to look for it again. Yeah. I had to. I had to clean up. Oh, I cleaned up my room so I could have more feet space and. Because <laughs> yeah, I sent you I'll, so uh... many damn comic books. <laughs> you don't have to keep those, well, by the that... way. You don't like them. Give them to charity. Donate them, and someone can sell them for to raise money for something. Oh, for sure. I mean, I definitely do. Well, 
As far as it goes for like all the uh, Ghost Rider, oh, I'm definitely keeping those. Okay. I'm definitely... Yeah, I just kind of overwhelm me Everything sometimes. Everything the Marvel, like even like a lot of the uh, Dark Horse stuff that you sent me or uh, the uh, Valiant, I'm definitely keeping those. Uh, the quirky ones, I'm definitely, uh, uh, I'm definitely keeping that Kelly Green one. But I'll have to look for that uh, high tower. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I sent I'm it to you. Sure. But um, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, I did a little experiment from him. Um, okay, so here's the controversial thing that people give a lot of shit to. But you got to understand, Will Vinton was huge until about 92, 93, and then the bottom fell out. He wanted to make more movies instead of just commercials. He couldn't afford to. So he sold part of the studio to uh, Phil Knight, who owns Nike. And uh, the thing is, they never end up making a movie. That's the weirdest thing is, I wonder how much Nike dumped into Will Vinton's studio and was never able to make a movie. That had to piss them off. I shoot, I wouldn't have doubted it. That definitely should would have. I mean, it. <clears throat> I think I remember seeing uh, in this little documentary video of someone who talked about the work of Will Vinton, and like again, uh, that whole uh, Nike deal of, of getting that movie never went through. I, who knows? It probably could have been just as magical as you know the Mark Twain film, or even better. But we'll never know. Yeah, and of course he had the big boom in the late 90s with PJs and uh, uh, Gary and Mike. But then again, too many people on staff. He still wants to make movies, but they're losing money. They can't keep people uh, employed. They're losing money like crazy. So Nike says, look, we're removing you from your studio. And at first I was pissed. You know, I just – I was like, how dare you take away a studio? But if he wasn't making a profit and he owed people money, well, of course you're going to get removed. So now I, I, I understand. And what, what they've done with the studio, you know, rebranded as Leica, and the films they put out have been phenomenal. Hmm. Wait, which ones have they done? Well, they, the first one they did was Coraline with um, Henry Selleck, oh, yes. which, of course, is their big breakthrough. That was a, a critical – uh, actually, all their movies have been loved critically, and all their movies do okay. They don't really make a ton of money in theaters. I think they usually break about even with theatrical, you know, including the international. All the money that they really make is from video, and these movies sell very well. So it started off with Coraline, then three years I later, it. it was Paranorman. Loved it. Uh, Box Trolls. I haven't seen that one yet. I haven't seen that one either. Um, Kubo and the Two Strings, which is... Um, Loved it. It's like a different way of doing the stop-motion animation. They look different, and it's much more action-oriented. And Travis Knight, his son... See, and this is the other thing. They gave him a bunch of grief because not only did he take the studio away from Will Vinton, they gave it to Travis Knight, and it's like, well, it's nepotism that's your son. Well, guess what? Travis Knight actually worked for Will Vinton for years learning the craft. You know, his name is on the credits for PJs and uh, Gary and Mike and, and I think Slacker Cat. So he knew what he was doing. And yes, nobody else would have been handed the studio if their father wasn't the owner, probably. But he is clearly True. he's clearly steered it in the right direction. They're making a profit, a modest profit, not a big profit. They're making critically acclaimed films that are getting Oscar nominations. And Travis Knight is now directing Bumblebee which is a massive studio movie which is trying to save the Transformers franchise. And you got to give them credit for that. Exactly. And from what we've seen in the trailer so far, I'm actually hopeful for it. And they've captured the original 80s uh, Transformers looks. You saw Soundwave with the little um, cassette tape going into nice. his chest. Yeah, but it just sucks that it's released on the same weekend as Aquaman. But uh, Alita Battle Angel got pushed. To February. Did it? I was wondering. There's way too many movies coming out at one time. Mm. What was they saying? Oh yeah, because okay. what was the guy's name? He was on um, Mission Impossible: The New Series. His dad was in the original series. He plays that um, OJ lawyer kind of guy on science. Oh, okay. oh, I, I would eat your face, Phil Morris. Phil Morris. Oh okay. Oh yeah. Phil Morris. I fucking love Phil Morris. Yeah, so he took over as the voice. Uh, oh, I forgot he played John Jones in uh, Smallville. Okay. Oh, wow. And Kevin Michael Richardson. Can I forget him? Yeah, so he ended up taking over because he just so rarely would show up in the last season. But yeah, um, a lot, I completely lost my path. I am really tired, so I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, Jacob, is there anything you want to say about this before we go? I would love to see more uh, claymation-styled films, and the legacy of Will Vinton is is definitely being passed on and done right. I wonder, he, they haven't said anything, but I wonder if Ardman Studios, who do like Wallace and Gromit and uh, Shaun the Sheep and stuff like that, are 
were influenced by him. Oh, dude, I wouldn't doubt it. I would not doubt it. Why you really breathing into that mic? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no that's, that's, okay. that's actually my facial hair. Oh, Just okay. Up again. All right, everybody. So <laughs> check us out on Facebook under um, Retro Rock Entertainment, Back in Tunes, whatever you choose. Choose your own adventure, kids. And Jacob, send us out. All right, everyone. Namaste and good luck. Namaste. Namaste. Good enough. What? <laughs> Shut up. I'm trying to stop. Stop this episode.